Moving on to the core network. The core network is the center of the campus and it's your top level hub and spoke. Let's talk for a minute about routing versus switching, which is layer two versus layer three. Routers provide more isolation between devices because they stop broadcasts. Routing is more complicated, but also more sophisticated and make much more efficient use of the network, particularly if there are redundancy elements such as loops. As we think about layer two versus layer three, and we will uh, look at this in a separate section of where we do a networking refresher, but if you're in a layer two network, and I don't know if you've ever thought about this, but when you're on a Windows machine and you click on add a printer and you say, oh, well, it's a network printer, and pretty soon a list of printers will show up. How does that happen? How does that work? Well, that works by your computer sends out a broadcast that says, hey, are there any printers out there? And the printers will all respond. Now, in small networks, that works fine. But if your network has 20,000 devices and there's 1,000 printers, believe me, the level of broadcasts in that network is going to be crazy because not only do you have broadcasts when you're looking for a printer or looking for a server, but both Macs and PCs and Linux boxes broadcast on a regular basis. For example, a PC will broadcast on a regular basis. It says, hey, I'm a PC and my NetBIOS name is whatever the NetBIOS name is. And as you get more and more and more computers, the level of broadcast in large networks is a huge problem. So uh, moving to a layer three segmented network to where you only have, oh, 250 or so computers in a broadcast domain on an individual subnet, that will make things work much, much better. Additionally, a segmenting your network has some security implications. For example, if you have servers that are on the same subnet as your users, the users can take over that server. And the way that happens, if you remember uh, how do we translate an IP address into an Ethernet address so we can send a packet, well, that's called ARP. And uh, so if, for example, somebody on a large broadcast subdomain ARPs for a server, well, the server will respond and say, hey, that's me. And uh, the, the client machine will put that ARP entry into its ARP cache and um, happily then send the traffic to the server. There's nothing to prevent me as an interloper to come in to your network, plug in, and if, this is, well, if we're all on the same IP subnet, I can send an ARP reply to the client machine, the PC that's talking to the server, and say, hey, the server's IP address or Ethernet address is my address, not the server's. And the client machine will happily just overwrite the server's uh, Ethernet address with mine so that all traffic that's sent to the server is actually sent to me. I can, on the same hand, I can send to the server an unsolicited ARP reply that says, hey, the, this client machine, its Ethernet address is me, not the client machine's I, I, Ethernet address. And now all traffic between a client and the server and from the server to the client comes to me. And I can simply forward that, I can record that traffic and forward it on. And now I have a man in the middle attack and nobody knows that I'm in the middle. Moving back to this core network concept. At your core network, this is going to be the center of your network to where fiber optic cable runs from all buildings. And if the core network is unreliable, then your entire network is unreliable. So reliability is the key in your core network. So your core network ought to be the place where you invest in battery backup, possibly a generator. And you must uh, have good air handling as well. One of the things I've noticed in many emerging regions is that grounding and bonding is sometimes an issue. And 
you would notice this if you ever touch a rack or a piece of network gear and you get a shock that means grounding and bonding has not been done properly and you should call an electrician to have that done if you don't have good grounding and bonding this can cause all kinds of problems not only can hurt you with the electricity but it can cause all kinds of reliability problems here's a diagram of what we typically will want at your core network you're going to have a core router and again that might be a layer 3 switch configured as a router but you're going to route on this again the routers give isolation between subnets from that core route location you're going to run fiber optic cable to every remote building so this is a very typical design and we will use this typical design throughout the rest of this course.